Bum bum ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. So we have another gift of an old Forester single barrel. Sing oh, single barrel. barrel. Okay. From Robert uh, Joachim. J O C H I M. Joachim. 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 <laughs> Robert, you make it. I can't get out of the last thing. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just going to go full on American. Jotchen. Jotchen? Jotchen. All right. Well, Jotchen. Mm. We love Old Forester. Uh, or I do anyway. It's I, just classic, like, I damn good. Don't love. I really like. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I would put it, I would put it equal to Wild Turkey 101 for me, but in a totally different flavor profile, so I get a little bit of back and forth, you know? Uh, remember I said back, uh, we did a um, SF Trader, we did a, um, we did a Grove Liquor Market barrel pick, um, and those were both 94s. Yes. This one is 50% hunter proof because this is part of the newer program where all of their barrel picks are now either cask strength or hunter proof. Oh, right on. Right? This is from Jensen's, which is in, I think, Miami, Florida. Yeah. Um, single barrel, and remember, it's 72, 18, yeah. and 10. Now, we're going to compare it and see. I mean, the proof is different, but we're going to see who has the better palate. I SF trader Jason Chow, who we've both been a fan of his barrel picks. Sure. Or Jensen's in Miami, Florida, <laughs> on the other coast. Well, do a little bit of AB. Yeah, a little bit of AB. Yeah. I am liking this big, rich, oaky honey tea. Yes, absolutely. Oh. This is. It's not even herbal. It is straight up black tea, mm. iced tea. Yeah, yeah. And they got a bunch of honey in there, and then that oak wrapper. It's a nice nose. There's that buried chocolate-covered cherry way back down in the middle. And then stuff. I'm getting a little threat of vanilla. It's teasing me. It wants to give me a vanilla, but there is sort of that dry dust note. Yeah, floating around in there. I think the oak is carrying that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, that's candy. Oh, it does get sweeter than you expect. Yeah, it sort of starts like oh, there's the oaky tannins and yeah. whew, this flush of sugars. Yeah, it's sweeter than you expect. Well, for the first sip of whiskey of the day, that one's still lingering. Yeah, the heat, Ooh. the the fifty percent ABV. I can still feel it going down. I'm right here now. Where are you? I'm right here. You're down there. I'm, I'm right, right here. Now. What is this wait, wait, part now, of your neck no, called? No, oh, now it's right. Uh, oh, now it's right here. <laughs> what is this part of your neck called? Right here, because the nape is like back here, right? Uh, but what is what is this part called? That's the part where if you um, can't breathe, you yeah, stab it with it, a pin. Stab a pin. Yeah. yeah. This is the pin stabby part. Would you pin stab me if I couldn't? If I would? I'd pin stab you anyways. Yeah, <laughs> just because. I was like, they're like, what's wrong with him? It's like he had a leg cramp. <laughs> I pin stab. I, <laughs> I was like, no, it's my. Ah. <laughs> I missed. Let me try again. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was trying to save his life. <laughs> you get murdered for a Charlie horse. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, oh, the leg. No. <laughs> for the rest of the time that I know you, that's always. Anytime anything happens to me, I'm gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I just drink something with a straw, I'm just gonna look. At it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna be like, I feel fine. I feel fine. <laughs> uh, it's a little brighter. The alcohol is uh, more present than I was going to expect based on that nose. Yeah, I'm getting an alcohol <clears throat> ding more so than the flavors. Where I was on the nose, you get the flavors and the alcohols in the background. I love the richness of this. This is like tiramisu almost. This is cinnamon and that ladyfinger pastry with the cream and the, oh. The thing that prevents me from saying the word rich mm -hmm. is the presence of the alcohol and it keeps things feeling bright and dingy. Right. Like the flavors are there, but that, that ethanol layer, it, it's almost like the ethanol isn't carrying the flavors with it. Mm. It's like this ethanol is a whole nother separate layer. And these, there's some really nice flavors there, but I'm getting dinged, I'm getting the ding there. All right, this is a 45, 90 proof yeah. SF Trader pick. So slightly. Slightly lower, but still a single barrel. How does Jason Chow stand up to? Okay, this is definitely. Wow, it definitely. is very different. Yeah. 
So, so far on the nose. Way more what do you of like? that, way more of that sort of wickery, uh, antique kind of note. On the, I'm on the, on the SF Trader. So the 45. On the, okay. The 45. I'm saying the 45 and the yeah. 50. All right. Antique. Yes. Antique and some more brown sugar. Well, I don't know. I'm getting more of the densely sweet brown sugar on the 100 now, I'm, than that, on the 90. Me, that sweetness is a densely sweet um, sh sugared tea with honey. Mm -hmm. And I get more of the, like a little bit of a softer brown sugar on the 45. And I, man, that 5% difference, mm -hmm. that is meaningful because the softness of this 90 yeah. proof compared to the 100 proof. Let me just say that for anybody, if I poured this, they would think, oh, that's delicious and smooth and kind of rich. Yeah. Whereas this one, some people might go, oh, that's a bit of a struggle. And it's but only, the whiskey drinkers are going to love it. It's only 5% mm. difference in the ABV. But man, the bite on this. Yeah. The, so much more dominant. It's more dominant. And I think the flavors are more prominent in this one. Mm -hmm. They're more married together and softer in this. Both are really nice. If you like Old Forester, you're really going to I like mean, they're these. both Old Forester. Like, yeah. there's no question. This is not totally different whiskeys. Yeah, yeah. They're actually really close. And if you really spread out, like, move around the 90, mm -hmm. it, it awakens some of the things that you find in this. Mm. It's all there. Mm -hmm. You know, my favorite thing about Old Forester is early days. Um, oh, yeah. I'm brown. Starting, I'm starting to get, like, the honey. It's carrying with it a cherry yeah. on this one, on the 45. Well, I see, I found the cherry buried in this one, too. But <laughs> this one, it's a little well, I'll front. go back. All righty, then. Research. All righty, then. <laughs> so, brown, the coolest thing for me about Old Forester is the early days of Old Forester mm -hmm. was a guy sourcing whiskey and blending it to create his own product. Oh, right on. Right? Yeah. So once again, we always find that history belongs to the blenders. And now, you know, now they're making their own stuff, but I love how so many things started with a lot of that blending well, activity and I, bringing in things. Yeah, it's the difference between a chef who is only allowing themselves to work with ingredients that they grew in their own backyard mm -hmm. versus chefs, chefs that are allowing to work with, allowing themselves to work with ingredients from anywhere in the world. This weekend, I watched an old movie that I really loved, yeah. Silverado. Remember oh, that one? The Western. Yeah. It had everybody. It had Kevin Klein. Mm -hmm. It had uh, Kevin Costner. Yeah. It had uh, the guy who played Emmett. What was his name? Anyway. And um, the, the older lady who was the bartender, uh, it was also the principal in Kindergarten Cop. Okay. Yeah. This is like all 80s movies, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, at one scene, they're actually in the back of the bar with bottles of vodka, half full like clear spirit, filling them the rest of the way with a whiskey barrel. Uh, like it's a whole scene. Yeah, and he funny. actually says, uh, so you're uh, mixing them all together right there. And she was like, yeah, well, we've got to do something, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, no, I thought you were using too much whiskey. <laughs> but the bottles are putting away are like half the color, yeah. right? And I was like, that is absolutely uh, so accurate. So firsthand the uh, experience is, is relevant to that. Whenever we recently did an episode about on our Whiskey Tribe channel about what happens to a pour over time, right? what was actually su super surprising to me, and I don't think it came across to the extent that I was surprised in the episode because edits and time and all that. But whenever we let a whiskey dry out, a whiskey evaporate, all of the alcohol out and then, mm -hmm. you know, some, some water too, for 112 hours. Mm -hmm. And it's just woody water. Right. Then we added in, to your vodka. point, the vodka. Right. It's like, it woke up and became once again much, much, much more bourbony than that woody water ever deserved to be. Right. It was no longer the original whiskey. Right. It wasn't. But it's like, I'll be damned. This is like bottom sh shelf, super, super budget entry level bourbon, mm. and it was just vodka being poured back into yeah. the the woody water left over from bourbon. What those guys were making in Colorado was basically Kessler's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, I like old. For you can't go wrong with an old Forester there. It's it's going to be a classic whiskey. You got the Tom McNally. I'm interested to know what whiskey themed songs UMB's love. I'll start with Willie Nelson's Whiskey River. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. I mean, how could you not say Tennessee whiskey? That's the go-to yeah, because it's so good, man, and it just stands the test of time. And it's the Godfather, one of the Godfathers of country music. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? I like. Um, it's raining, man. <laughs> Most Kung, people, most people don't realize. It's, and kung fu fighting. It's about yeah, it's about whiskey. Yeah, um, and 
No, I liked... Um, there's a Chris Stapleton song on the first album he released on his own. Not first ever, but the first one everybody knows. Uh, and it was um, Whiskey and... That's the difference between whiskey and you. That's an amazing song. Leo Rodriguez, two questions. What amount do you consider a pour? Oh! And then, how long does a 750 milliliter bottle... How long does a 750 milliliter bottle should last? It's based, a, on yeah. the, based on the pour. Based on that pour. Yeah. So when I'm at home, I pour about like this. So halfway so, up to the bulge. Yeah, it's about half an ounce ish, right. and I'll I'll refill right. when I'm sitting on the back deck. Mm -hmm. I'll refill with my dad, mm -hmm. you know, for two or three hours. Mm -hmm. When I'm in the house, I'll pour this, and that might be all I drink all night long. Yeah. Um, so basically, the point where the bulge is the most prominent. That's your go-to little sample sip. Yeah, sip. that's just when I pour some at home and put the bottle back, right. it's about a half ounce. That's that's the amount that you know, even if you get distracted, you get pulled into something else, that whiskey's not going to get wasted. Right. Because, yeah, I mean, that's a shot if it needs to be. Yeah. Right. And um, so when I'm hang so the only time I drink larger quantities of whiskey is when I'm sitting on the back deck smoking cigars with dad or friends, mm -hmm. and we'll refill, but we always use a budget one. So on that one, those bottles might only last, you know, a month. Yeah. The ones that we're just blowing through on, on if just me and dad. Yeah. If it's me, a bottle could last me a year doing half ounce pours. Well, you know what I want to do post Corona? Hmm. I want to do a review in here. But I would like to be massaged by a licensed masseur. While doing the review? Yeah. So oh, I would have like a massage table right here. Okay. Right? And then we would have a camera down here looking up at me because they have the face hold. Right, thing. right, right. And then a person would be working on my lats and my glutes and all that. Wh why? And then. Why? Why would you want to interrupt a good massage with being on camera? Just dare to dream? I don't know. I mean, do, look, would you want to drink an amazing... Serious question. Serious question. Would you like to be in a giant room full of whiskey? Sky's the limit. Yeah. Drink whatever you want. Yeah. Right? While being massaged. While being massaged. And then I think I have to do it on camera because I would feel guilty if I'm only just taking in the pleasure. I have to give the pleasure. The I have to share the pleasure. People love watching other people get massaged. Vicariously, you can imagine... <laughs> post -rona. What's your post a plan? How about I don't you're the masseur? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> to finally get you back for the throat puncture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got any plans post -rona? No, I've got a plan for where to put the straw on you. <laughs> Here's to hiding, stealing, and... and Lay down, Rex. Totally not consensual. <laughs> relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> <laughs> consent, Daniel, consent. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us. I do not consent. <laughs> no, we don't need to do this. This is unnecessary. Like, that's not me. That's not a, that's not a thing. This is Carla and Michael Bettersworth. This. So hang on. This guy was offered my job at Wizard Academy beef and said no, and then they called me. Are you, are you saying he's better's worth than you? I am. <laughs>